So let us begin. The science of emotions, concepts that allow us to perceive ourselves, others, and life differently. Now this is quite an unusual image here. We see a very small child playing with a huge snake. It seems that the parents are okay with this. This would be a nightmare for any parent in North America or perhaps even Europe. As you can see down below, this is happening in, in Thailand. So life is all perceptions. What is a horrible situation for one person uh, can be something very safe and relaxing to another person. So let's talk about, as we move on, some of the what science has learned about emotions uh, during these last years. Now, you may be getting the image changing before my voice or after my voice. Sometimes they will not coincide. Now, every emotion creates certain peptides or hormones that are excreted in the hypothalamus. Um, and uh, this is from basically from the work of the reported in the Molecules of Emotion, the book by Candice Perth. You can find this book, Molecules of Emotion by Candice Perth, who has also appeared on the uh, video, the DVD, What the Bleep Do We Know? And also the book with the same name. Now these peptides or hormones are excreted by the hypothalamus and they go out into the bloodstream and are received by specific receptacles on each cell. But as it turns out, these peptides are very similar to drugs. And what happens is that we actually become chemically addicted. Addiction is created between emotions and the cells desiring these peptides as they would desire any other kind of narcotic substance such as nicotine or caffeine or even stronger drugs. So what happens is that we actually begin subconsciously to create situations in which we can get our dose, if you want to use that word, of peptides or hormones to which we have become addicted. We could become addicted to pain to being done injustice to, to being unhappy, to being angry, to feeling guilty. All of these are possible emotions that a person can become addicted to and actually chemically need to experience these emotions and find ways to feel them. Sometimes with external events, and if we can't find an external event, then we may even create an inter internal event in order to feel this way. Another aspect in the creation of the way we perceive things are the synapses between nerves in our brain. Now this is a nerve cell or a neuron in a nerve cell and you can see there's these uh, like roots coming out and they are communicating with each other. Actually the communication is chemical in the end here between one uh, nerve and the other endings. And what happens is that these, when we begin to think in a certain way or react in very specific ways, that we actually um, become programmed not only mentally and emotionally, but neurologically programmed to perceive life in certain ways and to react mentally and emotionally in very specific ways. And we become habituated to that. Now here is what we call a neural net. These are neurons or cells and then these are the connecting links that have been created which become habituated ways of perceiving certain behaviors, certain people, certain situations in life and we automatically think in specific ways in which we have been programmed. Uh, so we'll be, we've become habituated chemically and neurologically, not only mentally and emotionally. Our mental and emotional programmings have become a part of our chemistry and neurology. <clears throat> now, when we can change our perception and subsequent reactions, the old synapses are weakened. They actually atrophy. 
and we are able to create new synapses, new ways of perceiving life, of perceiving situations and people and behaviors. And thus, actually, our brain begins to change. And the habitual ways in which we perceive things begin to change, and we become, we be, begin able to see life and people in different ways. And this is the whole purpose of the uh, seminar that we give, the Life Coaching Seminar, and Energy Psychology and Cognitive Therapy and Analysis, which we'll be discussing further on. Now, here's a very unusual sight. You'll see a woman here feeding milk to thousands of rats. This is in a temple in India. Now, anyone who sees this will perceive that through their conditioning. They'll say, this is unhealthy. This is ridiculous. What are these people doing? They should be killing the rats, not feeding them, not attracting them. But these people who believe whatever they believe in this, this is a temple setting, actually, believe that the rats, too, are an expression of the divine. Now, what's happening here is that we are receiving by the eye 40 bits of information at every moment. And that eye is sending that to the brain. The image, in the end, is not created by the eye, but by the brain, depending on what the brain has already experienced. So we construct images. We construct what we see, not based on what the eyes are seeing, but what the brain uh, is how the brain is interpreting this and what it's relating it to, what points of reference it has. And of course, the emotions that we will create in ourselves will be based on the specific beliefs or neural nets that this particular image is going through. Now, with energy psychology as well as active listening and cognitive therapy in any other form of transformation, whether it be psychological, or spiritual, uh, we can change our perceptions and the way that we see things. And when we do that, <clears throat> we also change the chemistry of our cells and our neurological reactions. And we see what is there as it is, without needing to place an evaluation on it, without needing to judge it. It is what it is. Some people are doing this. And this is their right, as long as they don't perhaps ask us to do the same. Now, these are some fun uh, games for a few minutes here we can go through. Um, do you see here a duck or a rabbit? Okay, so now we see here, some of you may see a duck, some of you may see a rabbit, some of you may see both. If you're seeing the duck, this is the beak, this is the eye, and this is the back of the head. If you're seeing a rabbit, this is the rabbit's ears, his eye, and his mouth is over here. So it's a game in perception, how everyone's mind may perceive that in a different way. Now, here is another interesting as you play on visualization. Um, some people may be seeing here a skull and other a woman at a mirror. Now, this would be the skull here, and this would be the teeth and the eyes, or this would be the woman and this is her reflection in the mirror, and this is her table in which she has her cosmetics, which are the teeth of the skull and the two eyes of the skull. So it all depends on how our brain receives this information and what it constructs. Now, some of you may see a woman's face here, or a man playing the saxophone. Um, and depends on how your mind is constructing what's on the page. So if you're seeing a man playing the saxophone, this is his nose, here's the saxophone, and his hands are here, his feet are down here, his head is up here. If you're seeing a woman's face, this is her hair, these are her two eyes, this is her nose, and this is her mouth. So each of you will have reacted in a different way when you saw this. The eyes are seeing the same thing, but the brain is constructing something different. Now this is an actual funny one here. Very few of you will probably see the seven dolphins here. Most of you will see a couple in an erotic embrace. You have the man up behind, the woman in front, 
is maybe her breasts, but actually children often see the dolphins. And I have to help you out, I have put the eyes of the dolphins with red. So you one dolphin here, another here, another here, and you can see the dolphins now, eye of the dolphin here and here. So it all depends on our how our brain is programmed, whether we're going to see an erotic embrace or the seven dolphins. Most children see the dolphins. Well, it depends on what they see on television, probably. Now, some of you will see angels here, and some of you will see little devils or demons or bats.